Architectural patterns. These patterns deal with the high-level structure of a project, organizing components in a way that makes your code easy to scale, adapt, and maintain. Clean architecture. An organization model that emphasizes the separation of concerns, with core logic being split into different layers and frameworks. This approach ensures a project is easy to maintain and test, but can feel over-engineered for smaller projects where you just want something that works with quick turnaround. In such cases, a brute force approach might be more appropriate. Layered or N-tier architecture. A way to divide a system into layers, each responsible for specific functionality, such as presentation, logic, and data access. This pattern is ideal for enforcing separation of concerns, but can lead to inefficiencies and tight coupling between layers if poorly designed. Model View Controller, or MVC. A fancy way of saying you should separate logic from visuals from input and have these three systems talk to one another, rather than rely on direct dependencies on tight coupling. In the MVC pattern, data and logic are usually grouped together under model, though you might consider splitting those as well in larger projects. The Model View View Model Pattern. A variation of MVC in which an entity known as the View Model, one word, is responsible for mediating between the logic and the visuals. For instance, a player class might serve as the View Model, coordinating player stats, the data, movement, the logic, and user inputs, the controller. The current state of the entity is then made public for other systems that need to know about it such as an animator in charge of updating visuals. For smaller projects, this can feel over-engineered. Model View Presenter A variation of MVC in which the entity in charge of handling visuals is given a more prominent role. For instance, a component in charge of playing animations or updating character sprites based on the model's current state. Alternatively, a presenter could be an entity in charge of updating UI, such as displaying player stats and a heads-up display. In either case, these should be separated from the logic, data, and inputs. Entity Controller Boundaries, or ECB. A design pattern focused on separating responsibilities into entities, called data, controllers, the logic, and boundaries, the interfaces. It's often used in applications where higher emphasis is placed on protecting data and creating a robust user interface. Otherwise, it's quite similar to the MVC and other patterns that promote separation of concerns. The pipeline or filter pattern. An approach that processes data through a sequence of steps known as filters, where each step transforms the data before returning it. Picture an assembly line where a part or product travels down a conveyor belt, having elements added, modified, or removed along the way. Complexity scales with the number of steps in the pipeline. Event-Driven Architecture, a form of organization that relies on the use of remote communication between components. Events, delegates, and observers are leveraged heavily. Highly decoupled and modular, it's useful for asynchronous systems. As with other event-driven systems, debugging can be difficult due to indirect communication. Event Sourcing, a means of storing all changes to an application's state as a sequence of events, rather than overriding the current state itself. The system's state is reconstructed by replaying these events. Useful when you need to keep a full audit trail of all changes to the system and require the ability to replay and reconstruct state, which is useful in event-driven systems. The downside is that this pattern can lead to large volumes of event data requiring efficient storage and management. Rebuilding the state from events can be slow and resource intensive or complex to manage as the system evolves. The Publish Subscribe Pattern a messaging pattern where publishers send messages without knowing who subscribes to them, and subscribers react without knowing their publisher. A logging system is one example of this pattern. The input system in Unity Engine is another example, where inputs are treated as actions that fire whenever a button is pressed, regardless of whether or not any scripts are listening for said input. Microservices Architecture A service is a unit of functionality, or a component that performs a specific task. Services are generally self-contained and responsible for doing exactly one thing. Services are generally only called upon as they're needed. For instance, a service in charge of input handling or a service that processes payments. 
the microservices pattern structures the project as a collection of small, independently deployable services. This pattern is highly scalable, highly modular, and can help isolate faults since each service is isolated and limited in its responsibilities. Complexity scales with the number of services, making it harder to manage communication between them. Service-Oriented Architecture This approach structures applications as a collection of services that communicate through a common protocol, such as SOAP or REST. This pattern is useful for creating modularity and cross-platform communication, but adherence to rigid protocols can often make this pattern less flexible. It shares many of the same strengths and weaknesses as the microservice pattern. The Service Locator Pattern a way to centralize access to services by registering them in a global repository called a locator. This pattern is used when you need loose coupling between services and their consumers. By using generics and the singleton pattern, we can effectively use the locator to call any service from anywhere, provided it's been registered. The trade-off is that this can be harder to debug due to hidden dependencies and encourage global state, making unit testing more difficult. The Client-Server Pattern Most people picture servers as large rows of hardware towers used in IT departments, but that's just physical equipment for storing and processing data. The Client-Server Pattern merely splits an application into client components and server components, where a client is any entity requesting a service, and a server is any entity that provides it. This pattern is commonly used in web and mobile applications, where service calls are made over the Internet, though that's not strictly a requirement. A server can become bottlenecked if too many requests are sent at the same time, resulting in high load and reduced accuracy or performance. The Broker Pattern A way to facilitate communication between distributed systems by introducing a broker component that processes requests and responses between clients and servers. Where a mediator actively manages the exchange, the broker merely points each party in the right direction similar to a receptionist or dispatcher. This pattern decouples systems, making it easier to scale and manage. Blackboard Architecture An organizational structure used to solve complex problems that have no straightforward algorithmic solution. It relies on multiple components contributing incremental solutions to a central shared data structure called the Blackboard, which acts as a global repository for problem solving. A software inspector or node-based window can serve as a means of intuitively representing the blackboard pattern, where the underlying collection or graph is itself the blackboard. Hexagonal architecture, also known as the ports and adapters pattern. A port refers to an interface, while an adapter in this context refers to the specific implementation of that interface. In hexagonal architecture, the core application is surrounded by these ports and adapters, decoupling the core from external systems. It's ideal for systems that need to swap out external dependencies, like databases or input mechanisms, without affecting the core logic. Onion architecture A form of layered architecture that organizes layers around a central core. It emphasizes separation of concerns, with dependencies pointing inward toward the core, the outer layers handle input-output, while the inner layers handle core logic and rules. For instance, characters in a video game might be represented as entities. Each entity has a reference to a core class. The core class is responsible for adding, removing, and fetching components. Components can include broad behaviors like movement, senses, collision, input, animation, etc. Each of these components, in turn, has its own domain-specific behaviors that get registered and sent back up the chain. We can then path to any part of the entity by entering from its core and going outward, or by one of the outermost layers and going back up to the core. This pattern requires a thorough understanding of dependency inversion, as it can get quite complex and is better suited for larger applications. Microkernel Architecture this pattern provides a minimal core system that can be extended with plugins. The core handles only essential operations, while additional features are implemented as extensions. Common examples include operating systems, IDEs, and game engines, where external libraries and packages can be installed to extend base functionality. Care should be taken when managing plugins and to avoid bloating the core. If there are any design patterns you think we missed, let us know in the comments below. 
If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you stay up to date when we release new content. If you'd like to learn more about programming and game design, click on the link appearing on your screen now, or see the description below for ways you can help support this channel. Thanks, and take care.